the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here i am to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, Oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth to create all for love's sake you came for. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to see that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, St. Rita family. Due to COVID restrictions, we have to do things a little bit different this year. So we're live streaming to our classrooms. But I encourage all of us to enter into this experience prayerfully. You're dressed up for church. And so I ask that you sit and stand as you normally would in the chapel. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to receive these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the saints of our order have manifested the splendor and riches of your gifts of grace, grant us through their example and intercession to set our hearts on being one with your Son, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am not a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to move mountains, but have not love, am I anything? If I give all, all I have, and if I deliver to my body, be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is my patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For our knowledge is imperfect, and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. 
When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understood. So faith, hope, love, abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministries that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to see me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. So the first reading from St. Paul gives us this wonderful list of blessings that God might have given to us. The gift of angelic tongues, prophecy, understanding of all knowledge, and the gift of faith, so strong that it can move mountains. With one catch, as St. Paul says, if you do not have love, you have nothing. This, then, is the central need, the central identity as a Christian, to love. Something that most, if not all of us, want to do. Because loving seems a natural thing, an instinctual thing, even 
the most human thing we could ever do. And that experience of love, when it happens, not if, but when it happens, will change your life. And this reading is, of course, often used for weddings. Love is patient, love is kind, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Sounds nice, right? Something we all want. But how? Love is arguably the greatest feeling that we'll ever experience, the greatest pursuit that we can ever chase, the greatest sacrifice we may ever give up. But how to get it? How to give it? Today is the Feast of All Saints of the Augustinian Order. And the tradition holds up these men and women of faith for their character, their commitment, and the way that they loved. There's all kinds of saints. There's a vast array of men and women, all who had very different lives. But they all shared one thing in common. They followed the call of Jesus. Some did so in active ministry as priests and deacons. St. Nicholas of Tolentine was known for his love for the poor. St. Thomas of Villanova was a bishop. St. John Stone was a professor and eventually a martyr. We have other saints who gave witness to following Jesus as contemplative, like St. Monica constantly praying for her son, or St. William the Hermit spending hours in prayer. But we also have lay people and even married people as saints. St. Rita of Kasha, St. Magdalene of Nagasaki, and the Third Order of the Augustinians. The point is, they all have different faces of holiness, and each one of these men and women were called by name to love God in a particular way. And when they said yes, they were given peace and unbelievable joy, for they came to live their vocation, to know, to love, and to serve God. But again, how? How do we do that? The answer is called discernment. In the Christian tradition, discernment is choosing between goods for your own life and for others. Vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to call. And all of us as baptized Christians have a common calling that is to holiness, that is a calling to love. Now what that love looks like is different for each person. It's up to you to discern that vocation and how you're going to love. But your vocation from God is a sacred commitment that configures all the relationships in your life. This summer, I had the great pleasure of marrying my brother Connor. It was a really small wedding in COVID, but I was able to do the service for him because I was still a deacon. And it just felt so natural, so right, that I was up on the altar officiating the wedding, and it was so good and so right that my brother got to marry the love of his life. It was good for all of us. That's the calling from God. I help Father Tom McCarthy as Assistant Vocation Director for the Augustinians, and so I have the great privilege of helping people to enter this process called discernment, to help people explore what God might be calling them to do in their life. And we have... We have this, this poster called The Men of Heart, 
And these are all of the Augustinians who are currently in formation. I'm proud to call all of these men my brothers. And the way that you get on this poster is by going through the process of discernment, of prayer, of asking God, what do you want me to do? God, how can I love? I'm proud to call all of these Augustinians, my brothers in faith, restless for the Lord, all searching for God. Discernment is a process. And so I'm happy to say that uh, we're going to begin a Zoom ministry of discernment, especially for high school students. We already have a few high schoolers from around the country who are interested in joining, and a few even from St. Rita Kasha High School itself. And so please let me know, let any of the Augustinians know if you're interested in participating, because this discernment group is for any vocation. Priest, brother, sister, layperson, married, it doesn't matter. It's a process of coming to understand what God wants you to do. And so it's open and available to everybody. And please let me know if you're interested. We give thanks to God for the gift of his love and for the invitation of Jesus to follow our vocation in life, whatever that might be. By sharing in this sacred feast, may the Eucharist strengthen us and bring us closer to union with God. For God invites each one of us by name to follow him, to begin that journey of faith, a journey that's amazing, blessed, and joyful. And so the question is, who or what are you going to love? You may have been given many gifts, but if you don't have love, it's all for nothing. So who or what are you going to love? I invite you now to please stand as we present our prayers and petitions to our loving God who always hears us. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be aware of the gift of faith, time, and opportunity that God has entrusted to us, and we may be good stewards of these gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will free us from our fear and help us to trust his faithfulness and love as we discover our vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that God will give them strength and patience as they guide their children through the challenges of this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seeking employment, that God will lead them to opportunities to use their gifts and talents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all spouses and engaged couples, that they may recognize the gift that they are to one another and continue to grow in their dedication and love for each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For healing, that our nation may turn from adversarial conflicts and allow God to show us ways to work together in harmony and to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are combating the coronavirus, that God will bring healing to the sick, give strength to their caregivers, and wisdom to those researching their cures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those killed by violence and natural disasters, that God will welcome them into the light and joy of his presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
and in a special way this November, we remember the deceased members of the St. Rita family. For the souls of those who are enrolled in our Book of the Dead online and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Receive the prayers of your church, Lord. In your kindness and mercy, grant our prayers and come to our assistance. For we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our God is good. Our God is good. Holy and righteous, powerful and true. Our God is good. Our God is good. Holy and righteous, powerful and true. Blessed be God who lives forever. Because his kingdom lives on and on and on. Lift your voices, sing his praises. Exalt him in the sight of everyone. Our God is good. Our God is good. Holy, righteous, powerful, and true. Our God is good. Our God is good, holy and righteous, powerful and true. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and good of his holy church. Receive our offering, O Lord, and through the prayers of our Holy Father Augustine and all the saints of our order who rejoice with him in heaven, make this sacrifice a wellspring of life and salvation for us all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the glory of all the saints of our order, our brothers and sisters in the heavenly Jerusalem. We too eagerly make our pilgrimage to heaven through faith. The glory of the saints fortifies us with hope and draws us on as we find encouragement and help in our weakness through them. And therefore, with the choirs of angels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to remain standing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Augustine, St. Monica, St. Rita, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, St. Thomas of Villanova, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So with one mind and one heart, as one family, we dare to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of socially distant peace. Lamb of 
God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Distribute communion, we'll say the final blessing, we'll finish Mass, say the final blessing, and then we'll have communion ministers come around to the classrooms. So please remain respectfully quiet while we go through the hallways distributing communion. Let us pray. Father, source of all holiness and marvelous in all the saints of our order, you have sanctified us through the reception of the sacraments containing the fullness of your love. We implore you to give us your grace so that we may complete our pilgrimage from this table to the banquet in our heavenly homeland. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And He came that we might have life. For He tells us, When you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you and you will live in my love. When you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you and you will live in my love. We are one body, one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. We are one body. Body in Christ, and He came that we might have life. For He tells us, Can you hear them crying? Can you hear their pain? Will you feed my hungry? Will you help my lame? See the unborn baby, the forgotten one. They are not unloved, for they are not unloved. For we are one body, one body in Christ. Now we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And He came that we might have life. 
story tells us I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the final sacrifice. I am the way, the truth, and life. You believe in me, will have eternal life. I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the final sacrifice. I am the way, the truth, and life. You believe in me, will have eternal life. I have come to save you that you might have life Through the toils and sorrow, through the Lord's strife Listen when I call you, for I know you need Come to me, your shepherd, for a flock of feet We are one body, the body of Christ And we do not stand alone We are one body, the body of Christ and he came that we might have lied. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. Jesus is the Lord, and he will come again. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. Jesus is the Lord, and he will come again. Yeah, we are one body, one body in Christ. And he cannot stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And He came that we might have lied. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And he came that we might have lied. We are one body, body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, body in Christ. And he came that we might have lied. He came that we might have blood.